Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Carpet Labs. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the evidence for evolution. Okay, so that there's five main um, areas that we're going to be um, discussing in this video. We're going to talk about um, comparative anatomy. We're going to look at um, embryology, the fossil record, DNA comparison, and then species distribution. Okay, so we're going to go through each one of these, um, kind of illustrating how um, each of these lines of evidence, these separate kind of fields of science, and um, scientific ideas help to support the theory of evolution. Okay, so let's start at the top, comparative anatomy. So when we're looking at comparative anatomy, we're looking at identifying or the, looking at the anatomy of different living things. And what we I can identify, you can see here with the image that you've got um, on the screen, that we see diff very different species often share similar structural features for their anatomy. So you can look at, in the image here, each of the, the color coding represents um, equivalent kind of parts or, or structures in the arm. We um, call this type of arm or this type of thing, we call it the pentadactyl limb. Um, penta for five and then dactyl referring to kind of appendages or fingers. And so you can see, you know, that we have the humerus and the human representing in the, the a similar sort of structure in the cat, but also representing a similar um, section in a whale and in a bat. Okay, and then your radius and ulna and their equivalents, and so on. That even though we have very different species, um, that they and the and we're talking all mammals in this particular case, that we're seeing that very different species have a lot of similar structures, and we call these type of similar structures homologous structures, um, looking for kind of same function, or same kind of same size. Okay, we also can then look at what we call embryology or the study of the embryos of very different species. And what we can identify is that each of the embryos for very different organisms have a lot of similarity in their appearance at very early stages. So you can see that whether we're talking about fish or salamander, tortoise, chicken, rabbit, human, that at this very early stage of embryonic development, right, you know, at the very early stages of that organism, that there's a lot of similarity there. Although, as you can see, as the the embryo grows and develops in that in the, the uterus or wherever that may be happening, that then we start to, to get some differentiation or as far as each species starts to become more and more different as it grows up, but starting from something very similar at that early stage. We can also then look at the fossil record. So identifying fossils that we can dig out of the ground. One of the concepts that we, we look at with fossils is that on that the rock layers that are further down are older than rock layers that are above it. So if we look at, okay, say, a cross-section of the land, that the rocks at the bottom are the oldest rocks, and then as we get further towards the surface that we have newer and newer rocks. Now, depending on the rocks and depending on the area, that they may represent different periods of time in geological terms, but that ultimately from bottom to top we're seeing older to newer. And what we identify is that as we look at the fossils that we find in the different layers, that the organisms we find start off simpler and become more and more complex as we progress through newer and newer rocks. So giving us the, the concept that the organisms that we have today are more complex than the ones that existed in the past, suggesting um, this descent with modification or this change over time in the living things that exist. Okay, and then in different places, at different stages in the rocks that we see, um, uh, you know, changes in species or things that have become extinct, new species that seem to have arisen at different points in history, okay? And that's how we can trace things like when different dinosaurs would have lived and so on, okay? And then what we can also do is looking at a very different kind of field, you know, fossil, the fossil record much more in the geology or paleontology kind of area of science. Here now we can actually study the DNA of different organisms. So looking at the genetic makeup or the genetic instructions in organisms that we can identify that there are genetic relationships between different organisms. Okay, so looking at the four that you've got here, human, chimpanzee, gorilla, and orangutan, that you can see that there are different sequences or different parts that have that are in common between these different species, that there are gaps or there are differences. And then, so you can kind of trace the family tree over here and seeing that humans and chimpanzees, for example, have the most in common of these four organisms. And so what we see is that between species, there can be very similar DNA sequences. We have a surprising amount in common with a range of different species, suggesting a common ancestor at some point in the past. 
And then lastly, um, we also can look at what we call species distribution, or another word for it is called biogeography. So looking at how um, the geography of the land and kind of the makeup of the, 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 the environment in which um, species are found has a dramatic effect on um, how they've changed over time. So just looking at the diagram that you've got here, so seeing that, all right, so we're starting off with a particular species when this island um, is, is one intact thing. But then as the island splits into pieces, that then A remains over here, but then A starts to evolve into B over here. And then as this section splits, that then B evolves into C and then so on. That as more and more separation or more and more change happens in the landscape, that we get um, different on separate kind of uh, patterns of evolution that happen. We call this divergent evolution, um, where separated species evolve differently. So um, this was one of the classic examples was with Charles Darwin, um, when he, he looked at the finches, a type of, of bird that existed on the Galapagos Islands off the coast of South America, and seeing that separa the separation of the islands and the different um, environments that existed there led to very different uh, changes in the, the structure of the finches in terms of the beak that they had and, and the other kind of features they, they either had or didn't have, depending on their, their different environment. But then suggesting that at some point in the past that they did share a common ancestor and then they've, they've differentiated or become different from there. Okay, so we've talked about, um, so, so looking at comparative anatomy, we've looked at um, embryology, we've looked at the fossil record, we've looked at DNA comparisons, and then we've also looked at species distribution. Each of these five different lines of evidence suggests to us that the theory of evolution, that is, that organisms have, that exist now have changed from those that are in the past. It's a, you know it gives further evidence that th this theory um, is the, the way that it, that best explains how things have arisen from now. You know we wouldn't say that there's evidence that it's true because in a scientific theory we don't really speak in that kind of language, but it certainly is the best scientific explanation that we have. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.